rich, that's the one. Uh, no, he didn't inherit it. He bought it on the open market. All right. Any, uh, anything else? <laughs> well, you know the bit where I said he's only got two flats? <laughs> yes, I've clarified the matter with Mr. Meacher, and he has told me exactly how many properties he does have. And um, I can't tell you how many it is. <laughs> Anyway, listen, the people in Oldham simply do not care how many properties Mr. Meacher has. So Friday, we went up and commissioned a poll in Oldham. How do we call them honourable? How many of them, of our MPs, are honourable? How many? None uh, of them. He's been a bit hypocritical by owning a lot of property and renting them out and earning yeah. the good living. It's just the same one thing you're doing. Uh, we're going to make a quick phone call. We've got Michael Meacher's mobile. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Mr. Meacher? Yeah? Uh, hi, I'm recording this for broadcast. It's uh, Mark Thomas from Channel 4 here. Uh, I was just finding out because you know you said that people in Oldham didn't uh, care about how many properties you had. We did a survey and 75% said they did. And we wondered if you might tell us how many properties you do in fact own. Well, there we are. There's the man who believes in transparency and accountability. <laughs> oh, the other thing was, I was sitting outside Tory Central Office the other day, right? So, I'm sitting outside and this bloke comes out and you know how you can tell people by the lining on their suit? Bright green silk. <laughs> and he just came up to me and said, oh, I love that show you did on Meat Show. W wonderful, wonderful. Because he said, that's the lovely thing about being in opposition. He said, we, you know, because you've put the boot into us for 18 years and it's great to see the other lot get it. It really is. He said, what are, you, what are you doing outside Tory Central Office? <laughs> he said, oh, it's nothing too hideous, is it? <laughs> William Hague. William Haig, in his Register of Members' Interests, states this. Any fees received from speaking engagements will be paid into the William Haig Charitable Trust. We are stupid. We are so stupid. We're just thick. Because we phoned up the Charity Commission and said, is there such a thing as the William Haig Charitable Trust? <laughs> and there isn't. It's not there. So he gives the impression that he will distribute monies to charitable causes. But the trust is not there. Does not exist. In fact, it's been up on the Register of Members' Interest for two years. And we thought, hello? Where's the money gone, Will? Where's the money gone? Have you earned any? Has it been distributed to charities? What's going on? Because this appears to be misleading. It is misleading. It's incorrect. And I phoned up his private secretary and said, this charitable trust, he said, no, it doesn't exist. We said, no, we know it's not registered, is it? No, no. I said, well, why do you think that was? He said, what it was, was, was people were just very keen. They jumped the gun. Uh. We were going to do it. We put it in the register, and then we didn't get round to it. And then it, we just forgot to take it off <laughs> for two years. And well, I thought, well, they, they, they must be that overworked that they've missed it. So, the following day, went down to Tory Party Central Office with a coach with 50 temps. Lined them up outside. We've brought along some temps. We've got some 50 temps for you. Right. Uh, to help with the office work. They're yours for the day we've paid for them. OK? So if someone could... There's a whole busload of them just outside. <laughs> Your short hair, like. Are you good on short hair? Yeah? You're expert, brilliant. Fantastic. This is the, the written statement. It's the written statement. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Uh, the reason the trust was not registered with the Charity Commission was that the trust was never established. It was registered in the Register of Members' Interest in advance of establishment on advice of the Registrar. However, since the trust has not been set up, it will not be included in future member, register of members' interest. Any speaking fees, etc., are therefore given to local charities. That's not really answered all the questions, really, has it? Eventually, I phoned up 
And I got through to this fella uh, called Andrew Scaddings, who is the uh, press officer, Tory Central Office. And this is the transcript of what happened. I, can I just be clear about this? Are you saying in the statement that the statement in the Register of Members' Interest is not misleading? Um, I've got nothing to add to the statement, I'm afraid. So you're not going to say if you think it's misleading? Um, I've got nothing to add to the statement, I'm afraid. Well, you must be able to take a view on it, because if he makes the speeches, it gives the impression that the money's going to the Trust. If the Trust doesn't exist, then it appears to be misleading. Um, I've got nothing to add to the statement, I'm afraid. <laughs> Would it be fair to say that Mr Haig has earned nothing? I have nothing to add to that statement. <laughs> Do you think that when people say I've got nothing to add to that statement, it looks evasive? <laughs> I have nothing to add to that statement. <laughs> oh, the last bit I should say was I did add on, do you not think it's slightly weird and hypocritical because you've questioned the government over Keith Vaz and Peter Mandelson over potential impropriety, as you rightly should do, and you have made much of the fact that they haven't come forward with the full disclosure, as you rightly should do, and now you're turning around and you will not come forth with information. Don't you think that's hypocritical? I have nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, we did, um, I did actually manage to talk to William Haig, though, for all of a second. You know your charity fund? You know your charitable fund? That yeah. you haven't registered it? Mr. Cole, I wonder if you could... It's just that... Do you mind if we register the William Hague Charitable Trust? Is that all right? Is that okay if we do that? And we have applied to register the William Hague Charitable Trust. <laughs> Any donations we receive will be distributed to asylum seekers, refugees in William Hayes' constituency. <laughs> then we come on to the Export Credit Guarantee Department. Yeah! And um, this is where it gets interesting. The Export Credit Guarantee Department, for those of you who don't know, they underwrite British business when they export abroad. If a default happens, then we, the taxpayer, stump up the money. We'd phoned up... This bloke at the OECD, which is the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, quite a big sort of prestigious body for developing country, for developed countries rather. And we talked to the bloke who is in charge, the chairman of the Committee for the Implementation of the Convention on Bribery and Corruption. We have 34 um, members of the group. 28 have actually ratified and implemented the convention. We have found that, let's say, one third are speak and span, one third are uh, doing relatively fine and one third are kind of substandard. There's one country which has actually clearly flunked the exam and I'm sorry to say it's the United Kingdom. I said, well, who are Britain's peers when it comes to bribery and corruption? He said, Turkey, Argentina and Brazil. <laughs> Like, the developed world is looking at Britain and they just see Jack Straw on the street going, give us a quid to look after your car, come on. So if Britain doesn't get its house in order, in a fairly short space of time, there may be mounting pressure from OECD members to actually start some formal kind of sanction. Yes, 